Is that working? No, that's working. Okay, we'll close that. Hi, everyone. Um, it's me again. Uh, I'm in a new place. I've got a studio now, which is quite nice. Um, right, so just to start, uh, I've done the problem set one for microeconomics here. Just a small disclaimer, it's a little cursory, if that's the correct word, or a little surface level. I feel like there's something deeper here that I should be getting at, but the questions are quite surface level, so I've just done what I could. Okay. Um, again, take whatever I do with a grain of salt. You know, I'm working at the same level as you guys, so I'm not coming from any higher level of answers or anything like that. This is just what I get. Uh, yeah. Also, um, I think macro and quant have problem sets coming out later, so I'll get to those soon. Also, I'm red because my screen has a blue light filter on right now, so that's kind of why. Anyway, we should probably get to it. So, starting on the first question, consider the following two-person game. We have this table here, and we're asked to find all pure strategy dash equilibria of the game. Now, if you remembered from what we had in uh, other stuff, where is it? Uh, if you look on here, you can see that we have, I, was it in D? It may have been in D, which is this one. No, I mean B. Yeah, the underlining method is a way of finding a strictly, a strict Nash equilibrium. And it is not in this slide. Fuck it. <laughs> it's probably in this one then. Uh, it is here. See, this is the underlining method. Okay, We can use this with this one, as you can see here. So we underline the best row for each column and the best column for each row. And we get our two Nash equilibria, which are UL and DR, if that sort of helps. Uh, okay, what's next? Then I think that one's fairly easy. Show that the actions P and MP are strictly dominated for both players. Okay, Now, strict domination can be shown in a couple ways. Okay. Uh, you, you can do it here with, actually, I don't think I've written this down yet. <laughs> oh, well, I will tell you. Um, you can use a mixed strategy to determine this. This is in these slides again, if I remember where to find it. This one here. Uh, so strict dominance goes by this definition, which is uh, player eyes payoff which he plays the mix strategy and all the other players, yeah. So the the payoff from the mix strategy must be strictly higher than the payoff from the pure strategy. And you can do that for P and MP and run a mix strategy, basically seeing that, pardon me, basically seeing that no matter what you did, it would still result in something higher, essentially. Um, so you can still do that. I have just sort of written out a description here because you can see that U and D strictly dominate P and M and P because they're always higher no matter what they pick. So for example, uh, if you were, if for example, this the column player was playing L, it would always be better to pick U. And if the column player was playing R, it would always be better to pick D. There's no case where it does that. And because they're symmetrical, it's the case for the, row player playing with the column player as well because it's the same thing you can just look back at that but anyways that's sort of my approach to it also sorry if this is a bit unfocused i'm doing this quite late at night i wanted to do it earlier but i just wanted to make sure uh delete the strictly dominated actions so if we delete p and mp we're just left with the two by two grid and we have this one and we can then use our where is it? Method three, which is a big strategy dash equilibrium in two by two games. You can just follow the examples here. They're laid out quite easily. It's in 1.3. Um, but simply put, we're doing an algebraic form. We're basically assigning Q and one minus Q as probabilities. And then getting the algebraic expression for those. And then we're doing P. And we're finding a value of P and Q that can allow us to sort of... Um, al Ooh, sorry. To find a a big strategy Nash equilibrium, but that's that. Okay, now question two. Two buyers are in an auction and they have five possible bids, zero pounds, one pounds, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, and they bid essentially, and whoever wins the bid pays the the amount the 
the person who can beat this. Yeah. So if I bid, well, you can read it yourself. It's right there. But for example, if I bid three pounds and my opponent bid two pounds, I'd only have to bid two pounds because that's what my opponent bid. That's the basic thing. Uh, I've done a small matrix here. Actually, hold on. What was the third thing? What are the players' pure strategies? Well, they each have five pure strategies, essentially. Oh, we got that. Yeah, they both have five pure strategies, and that's the main thing you really need to notice, you know? Each of them has five pure strategies, which is zero, one, two, three, and four. Now, the thing is, I said here, um, if they both been zero, zero, I thought at start that that could basically mean, okay, that neither of them are participating, so nothing happens. But it seems that you're participating in the bid, whether you like to or not. So I've gone with the half and half approach. This is for B. The strategic form of the game is here. Uh, obviously, you have the payoffs if a person wins or loses the bet, but you also have the payoffs in the coin flip scenario where if they tie, they have to flip a coin. And what I've done is essentially I've halved the payoffs from each of their... Uh... Yeah, I know I'm waking up in five hours ago. Right. Um, I've halved each of the payoffs for the, if they win it, essentially. Um, I don't know how valid that is, but that's what I've done. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, and can you find any weekly or strictly dominated strategies? Now, there are no, there are no strictly dominated strategies, as you can see here, uh, because there's going to be a zero entry in everyone's columns. So no matter what, there's going to be no real strict domination, because you kind of get that. Um, the only thing that works is weak domination, and only really at the points where you are bidding the value of your item. So, for example, let's look at Bob, uh, who's bidding three pounds. Weekly dominates this, so you've got three, two, one, zero, zero, which is better than these, because it's better than three, two, zero point five, zero, zero. Oh, I added an extra row. Go away. And it is better than this one, because it goes negative. Um, but it's not strictly better, because you can see that it, there's also these zero entries in all the other ones. Um, so it's weak dominated. And Anne has the same thing where she has two, one, zero, 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 and can stop there because further it would go negative, but above there are still the zero entries at higher bids. So it's weak domination, essentially. So there's no strictly dominated, but two weakly dominated strategies, as far as I can see. Um, no, two weakly dominant strategies, not two weekly, because the other one's being dominated. Two weakly dominant. Um, and the production line one. Okay, so, you know, the probability thing here was weird for me. I think I just settled on it being easier for me to just split the payoffs based on the probability it gave me. Am I in frame? I'm slouching. That's better. Okay. Um, yeah, I decided to split it because I thought that I was going to be a little bit better than just sort of having a weird probability function on the side. So hopefully this is okay. Um, this is a strategic form of the game, as you can tell, because um, you have the... What do you do for It cannot be solved. It's solved for two quid, essentially, shared equally between the workers. So if it's two quid, shared equally, then they both pay the cost of effort, and they both get one. And then if it's not done fully then it's halved so the entire payoff is one and of the only person that only the person that worked takes the cost and if nobody works no one gets everything um and so that's a strategic form there you can see that table uh to make effort the dominant strategy which is yeah basically you have to make sure that one minus c is better than 0 0.5 which means that c has to be smaller than 0 0.5 meaning the cost of effort has to be smaller than half basically um so that's the case where if you want to find a dominated action it needs to be either below 0 0.5 or in case you want to make people shirk it has to be above 0 0.5 you can see here um yeah so just anywhere that's not a half would produce dominated action but if we yeah, find the dash equilibrium of the game when you cannot eliminate dominated actions well, to create a scenario where we don't have dominated actions, we'd need C to be equal to 0 0.5, which gives us this. 
but that also gives us two Nash equilibria. It gives us one at effort effort, because you can see here, if I'm the rogue player and I switch um, 0.5, I'll, I'll get the same thing, essentially. And if I'm the column player and I switch, I'll get the same thing. So there's no real worry there. Uh, same thing for zero. If I switch as the column player, I get the same thing. I'm the rogue player, I get the same thing. So there's no incentive to switch because nothing else is a better option. I don't know how valid that is as a Nash equilibrium, though. Normally you would see an improvement, but if it's the same, then I would consider it just... It's still a Nash equilibrium because you have nothing to gain by moving, but it's a bit weird. But I think maybe that's just how it is. Question four. Uh, so, first of all, for what values of alpha is firm... I, I'm expecting you guys are reading the questions anyways. For what values of firm funds profit is strictly a concave function of x? Now, if you guys remember from fucking Pemberton, um, to find that something is strictly concave means that the second derivative has to be always negative. Um, but yeah... So if the second derivative is always negative, we just have to derive it twice with respect to a. And what we get is we get negative 2 alpha, which is always negative as long as alpha is positive. Um, yeah, and it says for what values of alpha. So I'm saying alpha is always positive, and then it's strictly concave, essentially. Um, why does firm 1, when does firm 1 have a best response function, and why won't weak concavity work? So weak concavity won't work because... If we conca so concavity is essentially that the derivative has to be the second derivative has to be below zero. If it is zero, then what was that? Yeah, yeah. I think it. What did I say? Yeah. Oh fuck. Um, no. Wait. Yeah. So the thing is, weak concavity is that not every point is concave. And if not every point is concave, then it doesn't normally satisfy what we need to actually get this be uh, a, basically uh, for a, um, sorry, I need to collect myself. It's kind of late. For a best response function, every point needs to be concave. So having weak concavity where some points can be like not concave is not gonna work. Um, Ignore this. I think I need to edit this later. But yeah, for a best response function, every single point needs to be concave, and a weak concavity would make that work. That's what I'm getting, at least. Uh, for B, find the Nash equilibrium when alpha equals a half. You can do this by getting the derivatives of every one of these um, equations. We've done it previously, but we just need to do it for uh, for two's one. If you get the derivatives, and then you find uh, the intersection, stuff like that. You can get the values of x and y that work there. And you can get the profit, which is a bit annoying to calculate. But the main thing is that x should be a plus a half, and y should be half a plus a quarter plus half b. And that's what I got. Determine when firm one ends up at a lower location than its competitor. Now, this was a bit weird to interpret, but I interpret it as when x is smaller than y, because firm 1 is moving on x and firm 2 is moving on y. So I assume lower meant having a lower x, of which we can just plug in what we've had before, and we can simplify that to show that x has a lower location than y when a plus half is my, is less than b. And that's what I got. So for the final one, uh, hopefully you've done your week 2 notes, because this is an extensive form game, not a strategic form game. Um... I think this is fairly simple, mostly because I, I've split it up into three branches based on what the union decides to decide on the wage relative to theta. Although I don't know if they can even see theta. Maybe they don't even... Hmm. It's weird. But I've split it up this way anyways. Um, regardless, the best option here for everyone and the Nash equilibrium is that the union proposes a wage lower than theta, okay? And this wage, if lower than theta, will be accepted by the firm because the firm gets theta minus W. Uh, and if theta minus, if W is lower than theta, then they'll be making positive, which is better than their other option, which is rejection, which gives them zero. The main thing here is you want the firm to have positive payoff. 
And in this case, they do get positive payoff. But all the union actually gets the wage they want, so they get this. The firm wouldn't change because they get less, and the union wouldn't change because you know they want their money. Um, and because, yeah, this wouldn't work because the union knows that the firm wouldn't accept this. So they, they wouldn't take this. They wouldn't make it equal because then the firm would be indifferent and they would actually prefer to you know, get something out of it. Um, the firm would be indifferent. It's, it's sort of a weird one, just setting it equal. Maybe it might be smaller than a week or two. But... Either way, an Ash equilibrium exists when theta is larger than W because both firms wouldn't change their outcomes. Uh, at least that's my interpretation of it. Okay, I think that's it. Let me just get my full face. Yeah, that's it. I hope that was okay. Um, I'm a little tired. Uh, and this, these questions feel a little weird to do. Might be just because I'm a bit out of practice. Um, it might be because they seem a little surface like i feel like i'm not quite hitting the main bit of it obviously if any of you guys have got like another answer and think i'm wrong about it please do tell me uh because i do like to see these videos as an opportunity for me to improve as well but hopefully that's good all right i'll see you guys later bye